Let us have a minute of silence for one of God's general, evangelist Leon Bonke, rise up. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. It's all about Jesus. Not all about TV Joshua. It's not about Leon Bunky, but it's all about Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I'm here to receive the harvest you have been enjoying. I know you are happy. How will I know you are happy? Ah. 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 How will I know you are saved? Ah. 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 How will I know you are blessed? You are not in conference or you are not in the meeting. We are talking of things purely divine. Okay, how will I know you are safe? Sure. Uh, 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 uh. Thank you. Okay, now, how do we maintain all this? Because this, <laughs> if you don't maintain it, Conductor can take it away from you. Because temptation is everywhere. The conductor will just tell you, come on, bring your money out. Where are you coming from? Look at your beer. Look at your stomach. Look at your, and I trust you. You know, say, in the name of Jesus. You are talking to me like that. Why should you use the name Jesus for conductor? Is that not temptation? Talk to me. It's a waiting. Temptation is what? I can hear you. How do we maintain all this blessing? I know you are happy. I know you are here. I know you are blessed. I know you are saved. How do you maintain? Maintainer is more important. Let us see your Bible. Because that is our standard. Let us see your Bible. Wow. Wow. Different Bible. Some race literature. Huh? Some raised laptop. Hallelujah. Now, you can only maintain what you have received and more you are about to receive by what? By God's way and His Spirit. Hallelujah. Can I just ask one or two questions from one of us here? Can you just tell me how do you maintain all this abundant blessing you have now? We maintain our blessing by the help of the Holy Spirit to live by the words of God. Okay, thank you. Hallelujah. You know, you need to read your Bible. You have to live in the Word. Okay? When you read your Bible, try not to concentrate on quantity. But what? But on what? On the quality. Because many of you, you want to finish the Bible one year, how many passages, how many pages, how many days? That does not matter. To live in the world, speed reading, can only be used for other subjects. E.g., history, chemistry, literature, etc. But never 
for divine truth. That is the scripture. To maintain your blessing today, read your Bible slowly, attentively, and repeatedly. With what? With forgiveness. Because you need corresponding power to understand what you are reading. When you look at the Second Peter chapter 1, verse 21, Holy men were carried along by the Holy Spirit. As they spoke the message that come from whom? You need corresponding power to understand what you are reading. That is why you must carry God alone, the Holy Spirit. Slowly, repeatedly, and attentively. Whereas when you read history, you are reading about events. But when you read Bible, you are reading Holy Spirit. Spirit, take more of me, give me more of you, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, take more of me, give me more of you. Forever. You cannot be faster than the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost leads while reading the Bible. You follow. But today, you are the one leading and you want the Holy Ghost to follow you. Whereas, when you are reading the Bible, you are reading the Holy Ghost. I know you are well educated, you can read your Bible, you understand. No, not that kind of understanding. You must examine everything you read. Examine what you are reading. Don't read the literature, the history of the Bible. You know, the history, the father of this, the father of Elijah, the mother of this, the mother, that is the history part of it. This is it. Simple. Where we have a challenge now is that corresponding power that suggests the step to take, that suggests the meaning of what you read, that call the Bible and decode the Bible. What you see as goal. By the time you let the Holy Spirit to explain, it may not be that goal. It's Idiom, parable. So this is why we have to humble ourselves. When it comes to Bible, speech reading can be used to other subjects. but never for what? The scripture. You must read it attentively, slowly, and repeatedly. As you are reading, it's reading you. It's a book that reads you while you read it. It's a book that looks at you when you look at it. When you are reading the Bible, it's reading you too. It's reading you whether you are forgiven. It's mirror. Hallelujah. So now you are blessed. You have to maintain your blessing. Rise up for prayer.
Tell your neighbor, I do not see Satan from the physical. I see Satan from other side, the spirit world. Tell your neighbor again. The spirit world. So therefore, when we want to pray down, you begin to do like this, as if you see Satan. <laughs> Some would do like this. Tell your neighbor again. I do not see Satan. Sometimes when I look at you, people, I say, well, will I stop you? It's a culture. It's a tradition. We are trained like that. When it is time to pray, I say, ah, I do not see Satan from the physical, from the natural. I see Satan from the other side, the spirit world. There are three main spirits in the world. God's spirit, Satan's spirit, and your spirit. There are what? In the world. God's spirit, Satan's spirit, and your spirit. You are a free moral agent. You can yield to either God, spirit, or Satan. You can eat yourself. So these are the core faith, the core Christianity. Core. You don't know. You just you wake up in the morning, you, you dress up the way you are brought up from the church, the prayer you want to, to offer today, you are prepared it from home, the sermon you want to deliver, you are prepared it from home, you are brought up in that way. The sun in, sun out is in the hymn. Conventionals. There are three main spirits in the world God's spirit, Satan's spirit, and your spirit. You are a free moral agent. You can yield yourself to either God's spirit or Satan. God is spirit and his worshiper must worship him in what? Okay. You are fighting. We are not fighting the flesh, we are fighting the spirit being that cause tension and pressure. Yeah, yeah, the pastor is praying, you may not even talk, you'll be looking. But your heart is our heart. Is the prayer room. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. Okay, if your heart is a prayer room, what is the fortune of this one? What is the fortune? Our heart is the prayer room. Tell your neighbor again. So if your heart is the prayer room, what next? Ask God to open your heart to his spirit. Because some heart are locked. Are locked. Because you don't have control of your heart, like we are here now. Some heart are, oh, when did T.B. Joshua finish here today? And he's standing, we are talking now, and his heart is saying, I think I'm getting home. Oh, we have community meeting. Okay, let's see what is going to happen. But I still have pain. Would this man hear me? What is going to happen? While we are talking to you, your heart is also talking another thing. You have no control of your heart. Say, Lord, open my heart to your spirit. I can hear you. I will not even ashamed to say that. When it's in our heart, it's inside us, and we are now asked God to help us open it. 
<laughs> we are not half God to help us open it because it's locked. It's locked. As I'm talking, there's a gentleman there that is saying, This man, what does he say? Mm, what am I saying? Why, why should anybody be saying that in the church here? Because his heart is locked. Say again, open my heart to your spirit. If your heart is not open to his spirit, nothing can be done. Nothing can be achieved. Right now, begin to ask God to remove every barrier between your heart and God's spirit. Open your lips, prayer. Every barrier between your heart and God's spirit. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Because you may not even know what I'm talking about. When I say barrier, barrier could be holding offense, having an unforgiving spirit, pain of the past. That woman, I will never forgive her. And many of us are here today. There are many people we have sent into prison just because something happened. Yes, they are wrong, but it's not Good for we Christian. Somebody is in the prison because something happened, either key or stay or be, and the court sentence such a person to prison, and the person is in the prison. As a Christian, you have to do something about it. Barrier could be holding offense, having an unforgiven spirit. Pain of the past. This is a barrier. Because the Spirit of God wants a free spirit. If your heart is not free, a free spirit can attract the Spirit of God. This is what I ask you to remove now. If there's any Offense, unforgiving spirit, pain of the past. Here you can settle the matter. You just leave, you give a call to the fellow. And settle the matter amicably. And that will not hold your prayer. Rather, God will grant you your prayer. Right now, open your lips, begin to remove every barrier between your heart and the spirit of God. Prayer. Every barrier between your heart and the Spirit of God. Be was all over the world. Every barrier between your heart and the Spirit of God. I command that barrier to be removed in the name of Jesus. I command that barrier to be removed in the name of Jesus. Sometimes you need help. You need help, you need deliverance to remove this. Receive that deliverance in the name of Jesus. Receive that deliverance in the name of Jesus. I command that barrier to be removed in the name of Jesus. That is salvation. That's just the salvation. That is the greatest miracle. Be removed in the name of Jesus. Be removed in the name of Jesus. Ce barrier soit enlevé au nom de Jésus. Barrier could be holding offense, having an unforgiven spirit, pain of the past, hurt. I command that barrier to be removed in the name of Jesus. To be removed in the name of Jesus. To be removed in the name of Jesus. We are talking of fortification. We are talking of repentance. 
we are talking of repentance. I am send me. Here I am. Send me. If the Lord wants somebody, here I am. Send me. That's all. It should be a channel of God. Channel of law, channel of humility, channel of forgiveness, channel of pardon, channel of faithfulness, channel of obedience. You should be. Whenever you see me talk about Jesus, is the owner of my soul. Whenever you see me talk about Jesus, be the owner of my soul. He is the owner, he is the owner, he is the owner of my soul. He is the owner, he is the owner. What is the meaning of this? That is whenever you see me, talk about love. Whenever you see me, talk about humility. Whenever you see me, talk about forgiveness. Whenever you see me, talk about pardon, humility. This is it. But you, you are living any moment from now. Your Christian life should not be a part-time one. It should be full-time. We have been living humility, love, kindness, goodness since morning. I saw a woman somewhere of recent. Uh, the woman bought a, a, a food plate of food, full of rice, and somebody was just turning around, and uh, the plate fed with full of rice. The woman said, oh, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. And I know outside there, I trust the woman. He will remove her dress. I say, you, 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 this is my last, you will call police. Cut. But that should continue, not only here. Full-time, not part-time Christian. Yes, your behavior today here, since morning you have not been smoking, since morning, you have not been lying. Since morning, you have not been taking alcohol. You have been quiet and quiet and quiet. Don't live here and get into your house and start bad attitudes. Whenever you see me talk about Jesus, is the honor. Whenever you see me talk about Jesus, he's the owner of my soul. He's the owner. He's the owner. He's the owner of my soul. simply means anywhere you are, you are a channel of love. Where there is hate, you are a channel of shiny light. Where there is darkness, you are a channel of pardon. Where there is injury, misuse, misjudge, you are a channel of humility where there is pride. That is it. A channel of forgiveness, 
Where they sin. Somebody wrong you? You don't say, hmm. Take care. Don't worry. That is it. Not just here in the church. We have been very quiet. Nice. It should remain like that. How to maintain our blessing. The Lord has set a table before you. There is a table before you. I'm just telling you what I have seen. On the table, essentials of life. Essential of life are on the table. What else again? What shall I say unto the Lord? All we have to say, thank you. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say. You know, faith is not imitation. You want to shake before you know you are blessed. You want to vomit. Because you see many people have vomited blood and all of that. But you keep asking yourself, I've not vomited anything until I vomit. Until I vomit. Even some people are... <laughs> Because others have seen, you see bleeding, a fibro is coming out, and you two have the same fibro, and you are expected to have your own fibro. Mm. It does as he will. It does as he will. It does as he will. That is not imitation. It's not imitation. He has a reason for leaving you with that pain. And he has a reason for releasing this man from that pain. When he knows that releasing you from the pain, you will not be able to keep that blessing. It will not strengthen your desire and your determination for him. 